Welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today's lesson, we're going to start talking about polysaccharides. So these are just long chains of individual sugar units, glucose, galactose, mannose, any number of possible. So it's just long chains of them. That's all. Instead of a disaccharide, so now we have multiple monomers. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we do, though, I just want to do a quick recap, one more example for disaccharides, just so we get a little bit more practice with actually drawing the structures out by hand. We need to be able to draw them out by hand, not just recognize them passively. So let's do a recap example here before we get started. Okay, so a recap example, we would like you to draw the structure of galactose, oop, let me make this L a little bit better here, of gal alpha 1 beta 1 MAN. So galactose alpha-1, beta-1, so the glycosidic bond between the galactose and the mannose is going to be the alpha-1 carbon of the galactose, the beta-1 um, configuration at mannose. Let's go ahead and draw this out. So let's see. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to start off by drawing the linear structures and then the rings, and then I'll put the rings together. So it's always a great way to do it like this. This way you're always nice and systematic. So galactose and mannose are both hexoses, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's make them a little big here. Okay, so we've got OH, 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 and CH2OH. So this is our going to be our alpha galactose. Actually, not alpha yet, it's just galactose, because alpha and the beta configurations are when they're actually in a ring. So you notice we have right, left, left, right. One, two, three, four. Galactose is the C4A primer of glucose. Okay, so this is our galactose. Now we're going to put it together with our mannose. So again, we have a six carbon sugar. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. We start with our aldehyde. Let's go ahead and put our CH2OH at the other end, and now we can build what's in between. This is going to be, uh, nope, this is mannose, right? Okay, so mannose is a C2E primer, so this is going to be OH, 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 OH. So you notice the two on the left, two on the right. So this is our mannose. Okay, now let's go ahead and draw the ring structure for them. And again, what you do is you take this linear structure, which is vertical, you rotate it to the right, and then you bring this side around the back, and then you make a little bit of a rotation so that the OH is actually pointing to the right, and this CH2OH is pointing up. And you'll see what it looks like in just a minute. And when you put it together, you get the following. Uh, yes, so we have, uh, let me, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so this, 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 like that. And we have the alpha configuration, so this hydroxy is down, this hydroxy is down, this hydroxy is up, and this hydroxy is up, and of course we have our CH2OH. So that's what we did. So now we have our alpha galactose, A-G-A-L. And now let's go ahead and do our mannose. So again, rotate it to the right, bring this aldehyde down to the right. So now the CH2OH, bring it around back and then rotate this carbon right here, the number five carbon. Rotate this one so the hydroxy is pointing to the right and this CH2 is pointing up. That's the D configuration. And when you do that, what you get is the following. I'll go ahead and do this one in red. So we'll draw the general six carbons and we said this is the beta mannose, correct? Beta one. So beta, this is gonna point up, right? And then looks like this one is also going to point up. That is this carbon. And then this one is going to go, let's see, wait, where are, wait, now I'm lost. Oh, here, this, is, this is going to be up, this is going to be up, this is going to be up. Okay, sorry about that. This is number one carbon, number two carbon, number three carbon. One, 
two, three, so we've taken care of those. And now we have this one, this hydroxy is gonna be down, and this is CH2OH. So as you can see, it's very, very important to keep track of which carbon we're looking at. This can get very, very confusing, so all the more reason to do it nice and systematically. Okay, so this is gonna be alpha one, beta one. So in blue, we're gonna be connecting this carbon with this carbon. So what I'm gonna do is this mannose, in order to draw it out and bring this carbon in close proximity with this one, I'm gonna to have to flip this. Now, there are two ways that I can flip this molecule. Remember we talked about spin and flip? I think flip is probably the best way to go. It seems to be the, more, the one that you see more often in biochemistry textbooks as opposed to spin. But you realize this is a flat molecule, right? So we have this right here. Let me go ahead and draw so you can see. So this is the Haworth projection. So this is a flat molecule. You're looking at it like that. You can flip it two ways. You can flip it that way or you can flip it that way, right? So there's two ways you can flip something, either side to side or forward and back. In this particular case, let me go ahead and do this in blue. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it sideways. In other words, I'm gonna bring this carbon here and I'm gonna bring this carbon over there, okay? So I'm gonna flip it sideways, that way, not this way, forward, back. When I do that, it's the oxygen that tells me how the flip was happened. So this is the thing. Wherever the oxygen is, that's what tells me where to put the other substituents, the hydroxies and the CH2OH. So when I do the flip, I end up with this ring structure. Now the oxygen is on the back left. Okay, and now let's see what it is that I've done. This OH, now this is the number one carbon over here. One, two, three, four. Now the number one carbon is over here, and this is the number four carbon, okay? So let me go back to blue. So OH is down here. This OH is gonna be up there. These have been flipped, so now these are both down. So that hydroxide and that hydroxide. This one has been flipped over to the other side, and it's also down. So this is gonna be over here, CH2, OH. So now that's the arrangement. Now we're going to put this thing and this thing. So this is beta mannose that has been flipped. Now we're going to put this together with this. We're going to connect this carbon with this carbon. And when we do that, let's go ahead and just draw our little equilibrium arrows. Our final product is going to look like this. I'll do this, I'm gonna do this in black actually. So we have that. And remember we do our little arrangement like this, except this time the O is over here. Like that, we have this OH, we have this OH, we have this OH. This is in standard configuration. The oxygen is on the back right, and over here we have flipped it, so now the oxygen is on the left. That means this hydroxide is here, this hydroxide is here, this hydroxide is here, and this CH2OH group, um, it's always interesting to try to draw it. I'll go ahead and put the H2 there and the OH. And there we go, this is our gal, alpha one, beta one, Manos. There you go. So nice and systematic. Draw out the linear structure, rotate them, create the ring structures in standard configuration with the oxygen of the back right, and then decide which carbons you're going to have to connect, and then decide which one of those monomers you're going to have to flip. Okay? Flip, it's up to you. You can do a flip or spin as long as the arrangement of the substituents is such that it's very, very clear what's where. So if you want, you can go ahead and add a little stereochemistry by doing that, darkening up some lines. Let me do that. I personally do not, I just sort of leave it like that, but of course, you know, your teacher might want you to actually demonstrate the, the projection by showing the darker lines. So there you go, that's it. Nice, basic disaccharide. As long as you know the structures of the monomers, which I imagine your teacher is probably gonna have you memorize, everything should be nice and straightforward. Okay, so let's start our discussion of polysaccharides. So, Go ahead and I'm gonna do this in blue. So polysaccharides, uh, so now we're, it's, 
we're just going to be adding a whole bunch of monomers one after the other on a chain, just like we did with proteins, except those were amino acids instead of sugar units. So polysacs. So polysacs, they're also called glycans. And this glycan name will come up. Also called glycans. So in case it does, it's not a different type of molecule. It's just another name for a polysaccharide. Now polysacs, They differ from each other. There's a whole, whole, whole bunch of polysaccharides from each other with respect to four things. The monosac units that actually make up the polymer. You know, which monosaccharide units are we using? Are we using only glucose or are we using glucose and galactose and mannose and uh, you know and acetylgalactosamine. You know, which which monomers are we using? Uh, chain length. You might have a polysaccharide that's only 15 uh, monomers long. You might have one that's 150,000 polymers long. So chain length. And if you have let's say a bunch of glucose that's 15 long and a bunch of glucose that's 1500 long those molecules are going to behave differently because just because they're made of the same monomer, glucose, the length will actually change the chemistry. So branching along the chain. I'm sorry, branching along the, well, yeah, branching along the chain. Branching along the chain. So what you're going to have is something like this. You're going to have some you know, monomer going on, going on, and all of a sudden it's going to branch off like this and maybe branch off again and then maybe branch off again. Polysaccharides will do that and we'll see some examples in just a minute. And of course the last thing that they differ with respect to is the nature of the glycosidic bond. Of the glycosidic bond. Connecting the monosaccharides connecting the monosaccharides. So in the example that we just did, monosaccharides, let's let me go ahead and write this out. So in the example with, we just did, our connection here was alpha 1, beta 1. This is the number 1 carbon. This is the number 1 carbon on the mannose. So an alpha 1, beta 1, well, maybe if I had an alpha 1, alpha 1 mannose, that's going to be an entirely different polysaccharide simply by virtue of the nature of the glycosidic bond. Totally different, totally different chemistry, totally different folding. That's the whole idea. Small, subtle changes make huge differences because you're talking about big molecules. And when all of these things sort of add up, you get entirely different chemistry. Okay.